Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? We are on Armstead watch uh, as Teron Armstead is visiting the Miami Dolphins or did on Monday. My assumption is that we would have come through Monday with a um, a decision from Teron Armstead. He's It's so hard to imagine Teron Armstead being back with the New Orleans Saints. If there was a deal to be done in New Orleans, it would have been done. He was willing to wait to see what happened with Deshaun Watson. If Watson ended up in New Orleans, Armstead might have taken less. But it's just very clear He's ready to set the market, get a contract annually north of $20 million per year. He wants to get um, Trent Williams' money, and I don't blame him. If you can get it, get it. And that's clearly the Saints have. The Saints always have a, a, a limit. They have a number in mind what they're willing to pay. Same thing with Marcus Williams. If there was a deal to be done with Marcus Williams, they would have done it last year. But they tagged him, and Williams didn't come off his number. If anything, he probably increased his number, so he went where he could get the most money. Armstead clearly is going to do the same thing if it's Miami or somewhere else. It's a premium position, and he is the top free agent at a premium position. He is going to get top dollar and should get top dollar. Um, you know, the NFL.com has their free agent tracker, which ranks free agents in this class. And they literally have Teron Armstead as the number one free agent, not available, the number one free agent in the whole class ahead of. Von Miller at number two, J.C. Jackson at three, Chandler Jones at four, Carlton, Carlton Davis at five. I mean, you get it. I mean, it's he is the premier player at a premium position in this free agent class. So if you're the Saints and you're starting to think, well, what's next at left tackle if Teron Armstead does, in fact, sign somewhere else? Uh, you know, Trent, the, after Armstead, the next highest rated left tackle or offensive tackle was Trent Brown, who re-signed in New England, two years, $13 million. The top available free agent tackle is Dwayne Brown, who they rank as the 27th overall free agent available, was in Seattle. You know, he's available, but he's also 36 years old. So do you want Dwayne Brown? If so, what type of deal are you willing to give him? I mean, when you look at the other, there's just not that many other tackles that were available in this free agent class. Joe Noteboom, who's 26 years old, was in L.A. with Whitworth retiring. They re-signed Joe Noteboom, three years, $40 million. He's likely going to slide over to the left side and take over for Andrew Whitworth there. It, it, it's, I mean, Eric Fisher, the former number one overall pick, is, um, is 31 years old. He's a free agent available in this class. And aside from Eric Fisher, uh, you're talking about Riley. Uh, Eric Fisher, they have rated as the 57th best free agent in this class. And the only other tackle they have in the top 100 here at NFL.com is Riley Reef, who they have 91st overall. And Riley Reef's year in Cincinnati last year protecting Joe Burrow wasn't exactly stellar. So, and look, I mean, they've already brought in a couple of free agents, including Lyle Collins there in Cincinnati. So if it's not in free agency, which it doesn't seem like it will be, your options are, do you keep James Hurst at left tackle? And... Ryan Ramchick at right tackle. That certainly is an option. You could also flip Ramchick and Hurst. Ramchick could play left tackle, and Hurst could flip over and play right. Do you want to disrupt both sides of the line? It's worth mentioning, and I went back and dug up this tweet from, from July. Uh, Field Yates tweeted this back in July, again, when Ryan Ramchick got his extension. Ryan Ramchick's deal has a one-time one million dollar incentive tied to being named first or second team all pro specifically at left tackle his salary in all remaining years would escalate by a million dollars so his per year salary would increase by a million dollars if he played left tackle and became first or second team all pro so essentially the Saints and Ramchick have at least when they did this contract discussed the possibility, not likely, but the possibility of him playing left tackle and if he moved over there, how he would be compensated. So you cannot completely disregard the possibility of Ryan Ramchick moving over to left tackle. And if I'm being completely honest, I like the idea of Ramchick at left and Hurst at right far more than I do that flip. The value of protecting your blind side against the best edge rusher, yes. 
I would prefer Ryan Ramchick at left tackle over Hurst. The ideal scenario is you go find a left tackle, you keep Ramchick at right, and Hurst is your swing guy. Your your sort of utility lineman that could play anywhere on the line because he's been very good in that role. So really, then it comes down to if if there's no free agents and you don't want to flip the guys you have, your other option realistically is to draft a tackle and maybe maybe you can get lucky in the mid rounds like you did with Teron Armstead and you find that diamond in the rough in the in the rough in the third round from Arkansas Pine Bluff maybe but you know the the other options when you're looking at the the top tackles in this draft you know Kuiper's got three offensive tackles going in the top nine picks you know uh Ikwonu from NC State Evan Neal from Alabama and Charles Cross from Mississippi State, he's got three of the top nine picks or offensive tackles in this year's draft. So, I mean, if you're wondering, the the other thing that Kuyper has in his mock draft is one spot ahead of the Saints, picking at 18. He's got Trevor Penning, the offensive tackle out of Northern Iowa, going 17 to the Chargers. So maybe that's a name to keep an eye on if you're looking mid-round one if there's if they decide to go offensive tackle, that could be the guy who you'd keep an eye on mid round one that they could target. There's no real easy answers. the The path of least resistance would be let Hurst play left tackle and Ramchick play right. But are you confident going into the season with that combo? If so, roll with it. But if not, it feels like those are the other limited options that you have in this offseason. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.